Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. Uh, first of all, sorry for not covering the whole tournament I was playing and not making any videos for a long time, but I had a really tight schedule with, uh, with the work I'm doing and uh, I had to stay in the office uh, pretty much until after midnight every day and I played the games as well, so I really had no time. And secondly, I had two defeats which uh, really irritated me, so I didn't really want to make any videos. But now I'm going to cover the probably the most crushing defeat I ever had. And uh, after this defeat, I don't think I've ever been this uh, irritated after losing uh, in chess or in life in, ge in general. Uh, but on the other hand, it was also the best game I played on the tournament as well. Uh, now I finished with four and a half out of nine. I was a few FIDE points in plus, but I really can't be satisfied be because of this game. And my o my opponent was about 150 points higher rated. He was just over 2000. He usually plays uh, pawn to d4, the queen's pawn. So I was preparing some lines in the Slav. He surprised me with c4, the English. I, I usually play c6, uh, trying to get into the Karo Khan defensive system of the English. But now he, he played e4, which is the accelerated Panov, and after d5, e d5, c d5, he played d4 instead of taking. And this is now the Panov Botvinnik attack, uh, the, the most aggressive way for white to play against the Karo Khan. And uh, unfortunately for my opponent, I, I know my theory in this line because I was forced to learn it, because if you don't, then you just lose. And uh, here we played, uh, well, not the main line, but one of the sharpest lines in the pawn of knight to f6, knight c3, knight c6, knight to f3, bishop to g4. And now he went for this line, cd5, knight d5, queen to b3. And now I obviously have a lot of problems. Uh, my b7 pawn is hanging, uh, my knight is hanging, and I have to capture on f3. That's the only move. Bishop takes f3. G takes f3 is his only response. Now the main move here is e6. And the second most common move is knight to b6. And uh, I think my opponent uh, didn't know knight to b6. I played that. And here, uh, black has a slight edge. And uh, yeah, I also have to mention that I have analyzed this game with an engine already. I have played it two days ago. And so that's the, the, the difference. I'm not going to be running an engine analysis at the end of the video and be surprised. I already know what the evaluation was. Uh, so yeah, let's continue. Uh, here he played bishop to b5, which is not a good move. Uh, I played e6, and of course uh, I could take here, but that's quite risky, I believe. And I'm giving him far too much initiative for a pawn. So after bishop to b5, I played e6, going to castle first. He played bishop to e3, now defending the pawn. Bishop e7, and now... If he does play rook to b1, uh, I can always play bishop to f6, and if I castle and he plays uh, bishop to h6, my pawn is defended, so I don't have to give up the exchange. He played rook to c1, uh, I castled, uh, bishop takes c6, b takes c6, castles, and rook to c8. And here I know that black is better, I knew it during the game as well, because the only thing I have to do is uh, exchange some pieces off and... These weaknesses, uh, these weaknesses are going to tell and definitely make white suffer in any endgame. Here he played knight to e4 and I went for a queen exchange. Uh, I was looking at uh, this move, I was looking at bishop to d6 and queen here with some aggressive ideas, but I really can't uh, make any of that happen uh, because of his knight coming to e4. So after knight e4 I had to exchange the queens, queen d5. Now he can't really decline because... Uh, uh, if he allows queen to h5, then once again I'm better. I can play bishop d8, bishop c7 and threaten some stuff on the h2 pawn. And I can also get my knight to d5 then, so I'm better in any case. Here he exchanged. Knight to c5, and now note that I really shouldn't be taking on c5 because he's going to have three very aggressive pawns when he recaptures here. So I played knight to c4 and I was planning to put my knight on f5 and dislodge the bishop or put pressure on the d4 pawn. So now b3, knight d6, rook fd1, knight to f5, king to f1. And here I thought I was almost winning, if not winning, because he doesn't really have uh, uh, too many plans. Uh, the only plan he does have is to push through a pass pawn on the b file or on the a file, and that's it, and I can easily stop that. Now rook to c6, I was going to double, f4, uh, rook fc8, b4. Knight to d6, I'm transferring back to c4. I was waiting for the move uh, b4 to free up this square. 
rook d3, knight to c4, rook dc3, a6, now I want to stop b5, king to e2, g6, making some luft, king to d3, king g7, rook to b1, and now you can see that he is uh, preparing to push through b5, bishop d6, and I was going to simply uh, march my king up the board and take the f4 pawn if he doesn't make something happen fast, so a4, rook to b8, rook c to b3, and now rook to a8, I decided to allow this because once my uh, c rook gets to b7, I'm fine, and I don't even have to go for a draw. So now b5, a takes b5, a takes b5, uh, rook b6, knight d7, rook to b7, and here he played knight to e5. And this was the critical moment in the game where I can choose between um, rook to a4 and defending my knight, my knight this way, thus cutting his king off uh, from the c-file, or I can take the knight, and uh, after I take the knight, I will have a good knight versus bad bishop, and that's what I went for, bishop e5, d5. And here, uh, I think I'm just good, because his bishop is a much worse piece than my knight, and I'm eventually going to win the b5 pawn. Here, the only thing I had to be careful about is not to allow uh, bishop to c5 before I play king to f8, because I play if I play without the king, then I'm going to be worse, so king f8. So he uh, played king to d4, king e8, b6, which is, I think, a mistake, because now I can safely take the pawn, king d7, king to c5, rook to c8 check, uh, king to b5, uh, rook to a8, and here he played king to c5 and offered the draw. And I had al already noticed uh, a way to to get a winning position, and uh, here the engine, let me just check the evaluation. So yeah, this is uh, more than minus one, or mo more than minus one and a half actually. And I have uh, two good ideas, uh, I can either play rook to b8 and uh, try to put pressure on his position, uh, threaten to to take them to take the bishop or something, but I also found found uh, I found another good move and that's rook a to, uh, rook to a5 check. Now if he uh, goes back with the king, uh, then either square, then I can just get to c6. And if he plays rook to b5, then I have a tactic which uh, simply wins a pawn. I can play rook takes b6, and of course his his rook is pinned to the king, so he can't recapture on b6. He can only take on a5, and after he takes on a5, uh, I take on b1. And now I'm pawn up. He does have some checks, but I have calculated that in advance. So now rook a7, king e8, not to lose a pawn, rook a8, check, king to e7, bishop to d4. And this was the only move I feared from him, because otherwise I was going to simply capture the bishop. And now uh, I have a couple of good moves. Um, yeah, uh, I have a couple of good moves. The best move definitely is knight to b6, and after this I can cover up with the knight, with check, and chase the king away, and this is just winning. Instead of that, I played uh, a move after which I resigned. Well, actually, I, I played two or three more moves, but they were insignificant. I was enraged. Uh, yeah, I played a move which loses on the spot and uh, I gave my opponent uh, a victory. And after he offer offered a draw after king to c5 and I declined, I did it only because I, I knew I could win the position and win the pawn or, or get into the position with my king. And I'm not sorry I declined the draw because, uh, well, even though he's higher rated, you should always play if you think you are better. So yeah, uh, the move I played, the blunder I played here, which loses immediately, is rook to b7. And obviously after king to c6, uh, my position is lost because he is threatening bishop to c5 checkmate. All the squares are covered and he is also threatening to take my rook. Uh, so yeah, if I try to play uh, rook here, then I can't go to e8. Uh, I can play knight to d6 and after bishop takes, uh, once again, this is checkmate uh, yeah uh, so after king to c6 uh, there's basically nothing to do and uh, well I, I had a blackout I had more than 20 minutes on the clock so I wasn't a tight knot and I should have played this position correctly but I almost always play better when I'm uh, when I have a worse position and that's something I have to work on and uh, the psychological um, aspects of my chess game definitely have to be improved and I have to become calmer, more concentrated and uh, think clearly even though I have a better position because this is clearly um, an endgame upon up and if I manage to get away from the checks and uh, free up my king and play let's say f6 then I have a simply convertible position because I have a passed deep on 
a protected pass deep one and uh, yeah but uh, I'm happy with the with the game it's definitely the best game I played uh, at the tournament I uh, I made no errors for uh, what's that 44 moves I played better than a stronger opponent I declined the draw which was a good decision of course and uh, then I blundered but still yeah a lot to learn from in this game uh, once again sorry for not making uh, videos for five days I I just had no time I'm going to be making them much more often in the future and definitely as I play a tournament I'm going to cover games as soon as I finish uh, because I'm not going to have such a rush uh, in the office anymore. Uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more chess, everybody. See you later. Bye.